Hello, we're the History Hikers. I'm Dries. And I'm Jente. And we're at Burg Spokenburg. Which looks pretty impressive and strong, but actually it has no key. This impressive beast of a castle near the town of Eitelborn was built on top of a spur in the early 14th century after the destruction of an older Sporkenburg castle. Its owner was Heinrich von Helfenstein, a vassal of the Bishop of Trier. Due to the instability and disputes in the area, the Helfenstein family grabbed the opportunity to increase their power and enlarge the complex. What we see these days is only a part of what this castle used to look like. We are standing in the middle of what used to be the core castle, but it was surrounded by a much larger outer bailey, of which only scarce remains can be seen these days. The access path to the castle would have been created in such a way that an attacker had to make their way around the entirety of the complex before reaching the entrance to the main castle in the north. Our first thought when seeing this castle was Dang, that's one high castle! We said it had no keep, but didn't even need it with walls five stories high? The main castle of Spokenburg has a very peculiar shape. Both the north and the south walls were much higher than the rest of the complex and functioned as shield walls. Shield walls are the highest and strongest walls of a castle that defend the approach to the castle. In addition, the north wall has a V-shape which helps in deflecting projectiles.
some details we loved were the many arches still to be seen in this castle. Like the arches in the northern shield wall indicating a large building used to be stood here or the two rows of blind arches stacked against the western wall. The courtyard appears much larger than it once was due to the missing walls. A wall running through the middle of the main castle separates the eastern area, which has mostly disappeared, from the westernmost well-preserved remains. A round tower stood in the center, flanking the entrances to the individual buildings from the courtyard, which were erected close together between the two shield walls. The windows, beam holes, lavatories and chimney shafts tell us that these used to be lavish buildings indeed. During the Thirty Years' War, the castle had to endure tough times as it was attacked and plundered by Swedish, then Spaniards, then Italians, and finally French troops. The French ended up destroying it, though it must not have been important enough to flatten it completely and leave these impressively high walls for us to enjoy. Time for the arbitrary subjective castle score. I'm gonna say an eight. There's a lot left. Exactly, an eight. There is a lot left. Leave your score in the comments. And otherwise, like, comment, subscribe, and all that good YouTube stuff if you want to see more of these kind of castles. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.